In this video, I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is to get fresh power steering fluid into your Challenger SRT8. In this case, we're demonstrating on a 2011 6.4, but it's the same for all the models up to 2014. Now, there's two methods I'm going to show you. One is the very popular reservoir drain and fill. Popular because it's a little bit quicker. And the fluid in here is orange because Chrysler recommends the ATF plus four transmission fluid. That's the same fluid in my transmission, the manual six speed. And this is the reservoir level. You could use a turkey baster for this job and you'll need a slightly longer tube, uh, but you can get the job done with one. I prefer to use a vacuum brake bleed tool. They're fairly inexpensive and it gets all the way down to the bottom of the reservoir and it will pull all the fluid out. It's going to take a couple of runs because the little canister is less than the uh, capacity of the power steering reservoir. So we'll have to dump out that first four ounces. And we get another two or three ounces out of there. Now we can put fresh fluid in. Check the level. Looks like we're going to need just a little bit more. Put the cap on. And I think the popular practice for this method is take the car around the block, let the uh, old fluid fill the reservoir. And then repeat the process again which I will speed up to save you guys a little bit of time. But we're basically doing the exact same thing. We're going to drain the reservoir. And then we're going to fill it with fresh fluid. And you did just pull out some of the new fluid and we still have mostly old fluid in this system, which is why I prefer method two. Method two is a system flush and it's really not that hard to do. Uh, you do need to remove your intake. This is the high pressure line. And if we do a little peek of view around the other side, there's another line that goes into the base of the reservoir. That's the low pressure return line. And to get to it, we're going to have to pull this intake. Now, this is a factory cold air intake. Doesn't make a difference. It's one eight millimeter bolt. You can pull your sensor off. Uh, you can loosen up the clamp to the throttle body and you're done. That's how easy it is to get the intake off of this car. And there's a little plug here that, that plugs into the fender. Now we've got really good access to the side of this uh, pump canister. And again, the low pressure, high pressure lines here. This, this return line doesn't go into the absolute bottom of the reservoir. So if you drain there, you're not going to get everything out. So it's another reason why I prefer the extraction method for emptying the reservoir. Now before we extract, we're going to put the front end of the car in the air, both sides. And the reason is that takes the stress off the steering system when you move the wheel. And we're going to need to move the wheel because we're going to use the steering rack as a pump. So I've got a bungee keeping the system from moving and holding it at the far left extreme. Now we can pull all the fluid out of the reservoir. And again, we, we don't want to move the steering wheel while the reservoir is empty. We don't want to introduce air into the system. So I'm going to back off the clamp. And yep, this is a foam earplug. And I'm going to compress it and stick it in that return tube so that we can fill the reservoir with fresh fluid. And if you keep the reservoir filled with fresh fluid while you're turning the rack back and forth, then that will force the system to pull in only fresh fluid and it will put only old fluid out of the return line. And you can see I put an extension on the return line, which I'm going to run into a little catch bucket. So now I'm going to do a sweep from left to right. And if we look at our little drain bucket, you'll see that it's only old fluid being forced out of the rack. That's what this is. And if we keep topping off the reservoir, it's going to pull fresh fluid in to replace it. And keep your eye on that drainage bucket. It keeps going up as I'm turning the wheel. You can't see me do it. Basically, I end up doing about two full lock to locks because I don't just want to drain the rack. I want to drain all the lines as well. The full capacity of this system 
is one quart. And it looks like we're done at this point, so we can double check that. We're getting fresh fluid out of the return, which means we've got a complete flush. I'm gonna put the bucket down low because I'm gonna pull off my extension here and let it drain into the bucket. Now we're gonna pull out that earplug and quickly put this back on. That went well, very minimal spillage. We can pull out our rag, put our clamp back in place. Okay, now this is what came out of the rack. This is all old fluid. And we can combine that with what we got out of the reservoir. And this time we've got nothing but old fluid out. And that's about a quart right there. So that's the system capacity. And we can do our final top off. So we've got all fresh fluid into this thing and we're ready to put it back together. Pretty easy to do. That intake just plugs right in. Get your uh, crank ventilation hose plugged back in. Get the sensor back on, and now we can uh, make sure that the intake is seated right. Get our single eight millimeter bolt back on. Tighten down the throttle body clamp. And we've got all new fluid in the Challenger. Well, if this helped you guys out, please do give a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And to help out anybody else trying to do this job, please do share this video. Thanks for watching.